Okay, so we're going to do the vocab for Chapter 3, Section 2, dealing with angles. Five different ways to classify angles. So angle classification, key idea. Three of these we use all year. Two of these are kind of trivial, and it's pretty much there for completeness. You can have a zero degree angle, which just means measure zero. We never talk about that much after this. Acute angles are smaller than 90 degrees, and obviously they're bigger than zero. Right angles, like the corner of this piece of paper or most pieces of paper, are 90 degrees. An obtuse angle is an angle between 90 degrees and 180. And then you have a straight angle, which is 90 degrees. So there's a picture of an acute angle and a picture of an obtuse angle. Next vocab word is complementary. Mrs. Baranowski had a clever idea. She said this is the right thing to do because people get complementary and supplementary confused. So a complementary angle, angles are actually where you have two different angles. When you add them up, you get 90 degrees. They can be adjacent, they can be touching, or they can be completely separate. So here you would say angle A and angle, or angle B and angle E are complementary angles because 40 plus 50 is 90 degrees. Supplementary, same idea, but we want things to be complete. And in geometry, when things are complete, you're talking about 180 degrees. So the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2, m sub 1 plus m sub 2, is equal to 180 degrees. So here we have angle XYZ, and angle ABC, so we would say that angle Y and angle B are supplementary because 180 degrees together are 180 degrees. Adjacent. So if you have adjacent seats on an airplane, you actually have two seats that are next to each other. The same idea here. They have to share a side in the vertex. They have to be next to each other. So this alpha and the beta, alpha and beta are adjacent. Beta and delta, delta is a little itty bitty triangle. Beta and delta are also adjacent. Now, alpha and delta are not adjacent because they don't share a side. So you have to be a little careful with that. It's angles that you're going to be able to either add or subtract. Linear pair. Notice the word line is right in it. In a linear pair, well, it says adjacent plus an opposite ray in the book. But really, you're talking about two angles that when you put together, you have a line. So you start with a line, and then you have a ray that shoots off of it. So these two angles here form a linear pair. And notice the line that's right there. Next vocab word, vertical angles. Now, I don't actually like the name vertical angles because to me, it, like, implies that they're going to be vertical, they're going to be up and down, and that has absolutely nothing to do with it. Um, they're the sides form two lines, they're opposite from each other, you're thinking about a mirror. So if you look at this, one and three are vertical, and so are two and four. Do you see how like you have these two lines? You can think of those as being opposite, the two rays kind of being opposite from each other. So if I grab Oh, a couple little highlighters. If we take this, the purple, and the yellow, they're opposite, so they form a line. We do that with the other two, and that's what we mean when we're saying all that. But basically, you're just thinking of, they just keep going straight on. Next, we're going to deal with the linear pair theorem, which should be kind of obvious, because what do we have in a linear pair? We have a line. So we know that linear pairs are automatically supp supplementary. We're going to know that they add to 180. So if I have this picture in the memory clue with x and 40 degrees, we know that x has to be 140 degrees because 180 minus 40 is 140. Vertical angles, we know that they have equal measures. So if we have this picture with 45 degrees, 135 degrees, 
Well, y is going to be the same as the one across from it, 45 degrees. Or kind of you could fold the angles right on top of each other. Angle x is going to be 135 degrees. So hopefully all this is making sense so far. Get anything you're missing in about 15 seconds, I'm going to flip the paper over. Okay, our last one is bisector. I actually hate the book definition. All we're saying is if we're bisecting an angle, we have a ray that's going to cut the angle exactly in half. So we bisected here because 60 is going to be equal to 60 degrees. We would say that the ray E through R bisects angle PEI. Now remember, we need three letters on this one. We can't call it just angle E because that's ambiguous. There's potential confusion. There's an upper angle, there's the right angle, and then there's both of them together. So whenever more than one angle could be formed by, by that E, you have to use three letters and be specific so nobody's potentially confused. Okay, next I believe you're going to get some time to work on your Master 3.2 worksheet. And then we'll put up a video with those answers in a bit.